Hi, here it's Flybubble Team Pilot Phil here with the new Flymaster Live SD. So if we have a look at the unit itself, uh, it's much the same size as the original Live unit. Uh, the four button menu system is still much the same. Um, the biggest difference that you'll notice is in with the screen. Uh, the aperture for the case is a little larger and the screen isn't recessed as deep. Uh, this makes it a little bit easier to see in the sunlight. And the display itself, when it's on, uh, is a lot clearer. Uh, it's, uh, the contrast is a lot better as well. Uh, the screen isn't touch sensitive, and the buttons, uh, you can run over them um, sort of quite firmly, but they need a definite click to, to make a change. Uh, the unit has rubber strips down the side, so you can connect it to the computer, or you can insert your SD card to expand the memory. And on the other side of the unit is the space for the SIM card to go, and this is what you need for your live tracking. The unit is controlled with the four menu buttons. And you have your up and down select, and then you have your menu and enter. Menu will bring up your menu. You can up and down into highlight a selection. You can enter to select and move on, or you can use your menu button to go back. It's quite an intuitive interface, and it's fairly easy to use. So here we can see the unit with one of my own personal layouts. This is one that I use for just general basic sort of ridge soaring. Um, I've got a, a Vario indicator in the top left, uh, the nav wheel in the top right, um, altitude, uh, an altitude above takeoff box, um, it's kind of handy, uh, little status indicators, time, duration, uh, ground speed, wind direction, and a little snail trail map at the bottom. Uh, this is useful for marking climbs and sink. Uh, the climbs are shown as a dark line and the sink is shown as a grey line. Uh, so this is the page I use when I'm flying near airspace. Uh, you have a large section of the screen devoted to a map. Um, I've zoomed it out a little uh, so that you can see the London airspace. I don't normally fly with it uh, this far zoomed out. I normally have a, a 2 kilometer scale rather than a 20. Uh, I've designed the, the thing so that you've still got glide ratio and speed um, and your vario across the top and your altitude. Uh, but what I've also labelled in is your distance to CTR, uh, your altitude to CTR and the CTR name. Um, it is possible to trigger this page to come up automatically. Uh, that's an option you have with the unit. I've disabled that, um, but so when I get a, an airspace warning I switch to this page manually with the F3 button. So this is my new revised turn point layout. Uh, so this is now what I use for flying a competition task. Uh, there's more prominence to the Vario, there's less prominence to the speed and glide, um, and there's less detail and information. Um, I've also changed my, my use of fonts, my use of numbers, and I had a very careful think about how things are sort of shoehorned into the display. Um, so it, it took a little while to, to develop, um, but the, the big advantage with this is that you can make each your own. Um, it does rely on using a PC, so you have to connect it to your computer to change um, elements. Um, but it's it's fairly straightforward. Um, a good top tip would be to take a laptop to the hill, uh, fly for a bit, change your layout, fly for a bit, change your layout, fly for a bit and change your layout. And then once you're done, it's done. Um, it is possible to set uh, user-defined fields. So for example, the altitude box you could make this a user-defined field and then you'd be able to select um, any one of up to about 80 different elements uh, to go in that field.